So STI wrote Sanson on GMO. STI wrote boot, you remember, on the reset you are in HDP level 1. Thanks to a unique boot entry, we have activated the STI wrote. Then the STI wrote will check if there is an, an application to install. Or if an application is already installed, it will check integrity and authenticity of the user application and will launch it after. Just calling the RSS services to use the HDP protection, it will increase to HDP level 2. So our application will be executed in HDP level 2. Secure, yes, because we have trust zone enabled here. So we will create a secure LED blinking application that will be launched by the secure manager. And when I press the blue button on the target, I would like to jump to the classical embedded bootloader. And this embedded bootloader allows us to download a new version of the application. And after triggering a reset, we will install a new version. So this is what we will do now. The different step. First, we need to create an application with the associated base, thanks to Kubemix. Then we will configure STI rot. We will develop our application. Then we will do the provisioning of the STI rot config, the debugging access, and also the application. And then we will do a secure update. Then we will debug this application. And finally, we do a regression. So let's launch Kubemix now. Go to access to MCU selector. So we'll start my project from MCU. Commercial pack number STM32. H573 IIK3. So it was the one corresponding to the DK board, and I will start project. My application will be a pure uh, secure application, so it is trust zone for sure. First thing is to go to Project Manager in the Project tab. So still in my hands-on. And here the name of the application I would propose to take Secure Application, for example. So Secure Application, Project Location in the hands-on. I will use CubeID. Our application is secure only, so I untick non-secure project. I click OK for this warning. Everything is in place. I will now save the project. This is needed to have the capability to define the boot path just after. On the project I've been saved, I will go in the boot path and debug authentication. Here I will tick on generate DR folder because I want to have a complete project with also the debug access folder. Then I will select the boot path. On here, okay, we've got Trezon only. What kind of application you want to do? I want to have ST immutable root of trust STI rot. Then in the next, I don't want a two-stage bootloader, but only a single-stage bootloader, so I will launch a secure application. And then it's finished. So here what you got. You can see that we've got the config file location of the STI rot. We can edit them. I will just show them without modifying them. So as you can see, it shows TPC or Trusted Package Creator. It's based on an XML file, which is a template. And here you can see what configuration could be done for this STI rot. So I can have only a firmware image, but I could also have the capability to have some data image if I want. If the firmware is full secure, this is the case. But if you untick this, you have the possibility to define also the portion of your application which is non-secure. Here you've got the execution slot, so it will be the base address of my flash, the downloading slot location, and the firmware area size, maximum size of your application here. But you also have the encryption key and the authentication key. Those are, I will say, delivered by default with our value, but for sure if you regenerate, it will be unique and it is for you. It's something that you will have to store in a secure room. 
and then you can click on generate OB key, which is a I would say the file that we need to provision to configure the STI rot. But here I will not modify anything. So I just close this one. So now we are ready to develop our application. So I go back in the pinout function and what my application is doing is just some LED blinking. So I just need to define the LED pin PI9 to output secure and also the user button to trick the jump in the embedded bootloader, which is PC13. So first I will look for PA9. I left click on it, GPIO output. After I should right click on it, pin reservation and assign it to secure context. Then for PC13, I left click on it. It will be a GPIO input, I right click on it and assign it to the secure world. And I think my application is ready, or I will say the initialization code is ready. I will double check the GPIO settings, PC13, I would like to ensure that secure context is well secure. Okay, I can generate my code. I cache, I don't mind, I will ignore this warning. Okay, I will now launch CubeID and I will import my generated project. So I go in the menu file, open project from file system. Here, if I go in the directory, hands on, I found my secure application and just select folder. Finish. And here we have our application project, which is just there. We still have the road provisioning folder with STI rot, which allows to do the installation of the STI rot. I will say the provisioning associated to it and the debugging authentication. So now what I will do, I will import some code from the material I share with you. If I come back in my material, so workshop on the material you receive. You can go in the STI rot folder and here you've got a loader.h and loader.c. So we'll drag and drop the loader.h to the ink folder. Copy the file. And then we do the same loader.c in the source file. And copy. What do we have in this code? The Embedded bootloader is executed in non-secure context. So all this code is just to configure everything to have the capability to execute the embedded bootloader. Because here we are in a secure context, so we have to switch to non-secure context. After we need to add in the main.c some code, you will see quite basic one. So an include of the loader.h. And in the while one loop, we will do the LED blinking to 500 milliseconds and then we will read the PC13 and if the button is pressed then we will call the loader that means we jump to the embedded loader to download a new version of the firmware so let's copy part this so I will copy the include I open the main.c I copy it line 24 then I will take all this code and copy it just after the user code beginning 3. And that's it. So if you are using CubeMX 6.10 or Herper, uh, you will need to do an additional patch. This one is in the core, include folder and please open partition STM32H573XX.H. Then if you go to line 210, here it was the region 5, which is the one of the embedded bootloader, and please I would like to deactivate this one by setting the SIU init region 5 to 0. Then you can save. Okay, 
let's build the application the PC success our application is ready now I propose to provision everything I mean the STR work configuration associated keys also to check the integrity and the authenticity of our firmware and to decrypt it when we do an update. To do so, we have some script again. So if you go in your application on zone, secure happily, you've got the root provisioning folder and you've got STI root folder. Here you can launch provisioning.bats. So here you've got the script again with many information and we will use always the default configuration. As you can see, it started by programming some option byte and flashing the image. I will give you details about what's happened here just after. On this is done, it will ask us what is the final state you want for your product just after. Here we'll go to closed state. So we're moving to provisioning. So we are familiar with it now. That means we are provisioning the OB key storage with the keys that is a configuration of the STI rot, but also for the debugging access. And then finally, it will change the product state to closed. So while it's finished, you should have the LED blinking on your board. And if I come back to my presentation, what have been done there? First, option byte have been programmed to activate the zone and to declare portion of flash as secure thanks to secure watermark. Then our application encrypted and signed have been downloading in the user app downloading area. That means on the next reset when the STI route will be configured it will check decrypt and then we check the integrity and authenticity and install this new version or this first version. Then the product have been moved to provisioning state and we have provisioned the configuration of the STI route, the data associated and also the debug authentication keys. All this stuff are going in the OBK level one. And finally, we move to LED blinking state. Okay. So now what I propose is to create a new version of this firmware that is running for the moment and doing the download of this new version. So we will modify the application and change the delay to 100. And after we will press the blue button. You can try it also already on your target. If you press the blue button, the let's stop blinking because you jump to the embedded bootloader. So let's do this. I come back to kubeid. In my main.c, I will close this file. And here I'm changing the let blinking speed just to see the difference in the behavior. Then I'm compiling. I'm waiting for the DPC successful traces. OK, and now I will go to Cube Programmer. So first things, usually you are on Estelink. You press the blue button on your target. Let's stop blinking. That means you are in the embedded bootloader. So now I will select user interface here. Here, select the COM port that corresponding to your target. So for me, it's 112. And I will then click on connect. As you can see, I'm able to connect with the embedded bootloader. So now I can download a new version of my application. I will do it thanks. This menu, those are erasing and programming. And here we will select where is uh, our application. So let's browse. On this PC, I will go in my hands on my secure application in the binary folder I've got the X file so already with the correct format which allow to download in the downloading slot I'm just open it start the program so you should have a message to say that download is complete and if you press the reset button you should have this LED blinking faster which is the case there. Okay, so I just disconnect because I'm not anymore in the system bootloader. So if I come back to my cube ID, I would like to show you that we still have the capability to reopen the debugging link. 
which could be done quite easily. So if I right click on the project, debug as STM32C C++ application. So what I would like to do, I would like to connect with the debugger. I will be in a hot plug mode. So that means I don't want to trick the reset because I really want to have a hot attach here. On the debug authentication, because we will need this one, I will browse to have the keys. So in my secure application, I've got the root provisioning DA keys. I will use the key3leaf.pem. Okay. So you need really the private key. Then the certificate that we will use. So in the GA folder, and this time it was in the certificate, you want to use the certleaf chain dot b64 open and you remember what is the level it will be in secure level 2 okay next point we have to remove the download because we don't want to erase the application so here i just go in the startup menu load an image i edit it and here i remove the download but i keep the load of the symbol which allow me to see where I am with the debugger. And then I load the debug. So the debugger is attached. As, in, um, as I am in hot plug mode, I need to break the execution, so to suspend. And here you can see that I'm in the delay. So I can put a breakpoint, for example, at the beginning of the code. Just run it, press the reset button. And then I will manage to debug my application. So we've got the STI route, which is there. We have in closed state, but thanks to this certificate and this associated private key, we still have the capability to reopen on debug and see what's happened on this target, if there is an issue or not. OK, so let's close the debug. And the last step will be to do a regression. I mean, we have finished the undone. We have seen that it's quite simple, but I want to have a full cleanup of my boat. So what we will do is just use, again, some script provided. So it's still in our application. We've got the root provisioning, DA. And here you've got regression.bat, which will remove everything from your target, from the flash and from the secure storage. So I just double click on it. And as you can see, authentication is done. And then regression have been triggered. If I check with Cube Programmer, I can go back with STLink, connect under reset will work. And here, if I check the option byte, product state, I mean open state. That means I finish and recover from this one. This is the end of uh, this hands on. So, what we have seen with this hands on? We have seen how STIROT is integrated in STM32 ecosystem and how it's simple using CubeMX to configure the boot part. We have seen after that we have everything to provision our targets, some script, and then we can do a secure firmware update quite easily. Finally, I will also demonstrate again the capability to reopen the debugging link of a closed device and finally do a regression.